since I've been homeless, the, the thing I found out most that upsets me is trying to get help, even with access. Now that I have access that I got at the beginning of the year because of the Obamacare, it seems like they make it so difficult and so hard to keep it up. It's almost like they do it so that people will just give up and say, you know, screw it, it's not worth it. I mean, I got my access, then I had to do a change of address, you know, to have it here at CAS. And um, I got a letter saying, we need to confirm your address within 10 days or we'll drop your access. And I'm thinking, well, I called, gave you my new address, you sent me the letter to my address, what more do you need? So I called the number, I still have the logs on my phone. I called every day and an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 50 minutes, up until I ran out of minutes. It, they just wouldn't answer. It just, I was just on hold the whole entire time and I could see how people would either give up or just not be able to get through at all. And they'll just cancel your insurance. Trying to get a job is extremely difficult whether you are um, 18 and homeless or you are 58 and homeless because there's things that most of us don't think about um, that haven't been homeless like all right where's your permanent address that you want them that you're going to put down where are they going to call you at um, if they call you tomorrow morning and say hey come back for a second interview and let's say you do have a phone where are you going to be able to get to make sure that your clothes are clean and that you can get cleaned up to be there on time. And then how are you going to get there on time? We used to see a lot of different agency that gave out bus tickets and stuff. Those have been done away with. So a lot of these people are literally walking miles and miles and miles to get to an interview. And then hoping to be able to be employed long enough that they can buy their own bus ticket. But there's a lot of discrimination that goes on for the center that our drop-in center in Tempe. Um, we will say we'll put down our address as your permanent address. Well, a lot of the employers now know that if if a client, you know, if someone coming in writes down that address, that it means they're homeless. So, you know, as an employer, am I going to to pick the person who's homeless, or am I going to pick the person that has a home? I'm going to think, all right, the person that has the home is much more stable, so I'm going to give them the job. Once the employer sees you're staying at CAS, then it's like okay, um, we'll call you, you know, there's a stigma to the cast that it, it can be bad. And somebody had stolen my food car inside cast when I was there the first couple of weeks. Um, I went into the, uh, in the health care for the homeless, there's a DES lady that comes in every morning. She'll take 15 people, and that's it, if you want to apply for food stamps or access. Um, I went in there to let her know that my card got stolen, and I was surprised at the way she treated me. She treated me like shit, thinking that I sold my card. Because she kept telling me, well, did you call and cancel? So well, the number's on the card. I don't know who to call or you know, to And she goes, well, I'll call and cancel it right now. And I said, cool, great. And she goes, are you sure? Because it'll cancel the card. I'll call right now and cancel it. And I said, okay, that's what I want. That's what I need. She, I said, so how do I get another card? And she was like, well, you probably won't get one. They only allow one per year. And if they do give you another one, it's going to cost you $5. And you're going to have to wait until your day, uh, you know, each month people's cards get loaded on a certain day. She said, you're going to need to wait until that day, go down to the office and see if you can get another card. But it, it's difficult. They, it seems like they make it difficult to get anything to help people. It, it makes you want to give up. So when you do work in a social service um, atmosphere, working in the nonprofit industrial complex, a lot of people lack that compassion. You know, again, there's there's days where I'm burned out, and I'm I already have a caseload of 40 individuals, and have someone who I'm constantly trying to rehabilitate a, around a certain issue. 
um, it could be easy for me to get frustrated with that person and be like, you know what, you chose, this is what you want, this is what you call for, bye, I don't want to deal with it. But as social service providers, that, that cannot be the attitude that we have.